Close your eyes for a moment and take a trip down memory lane. Can you recall that exhilarating feeling when you first guided a mustachioed plumber named Mario through vibrant worlds, leaping over obstacles, collecting coins, and rescuing a princess? It's a nostalgic image etched in the hearts of countless people around the globe. Super Mario, with his infectious charm and timeless adventures, has transcended the realm of video games to become a bona fide cultural icon. But there's a captivating story behind this iconic figure that you may not know. Brace yourself as we uncover the extraordinary journey of how Super Mario not only saved Nintendo, but also played a crucial role in rescuing the entire video game industry from the brink of collapse. So how did this plucky plumber achieve such a monumental feat? To find out, we must travel back in time to an era when Nintendo was far from the gaming giant we know today. Welcome to another episode of Data Fusion. Get ready to discover how Super Mario became the unlikely hero that forever changed the course of gaming history. Our journey begins over a century ago in 1889, when Fusajiro Yamauchi founded Nintendo Kopai, a small company specializing in the production of Hanafuda cards, a beloved form of Japanese playing cards used for gambling. The name Nintendo, roughly translating to Luck Heaven Hall, carries the profound meaning of man proposes, God disposes. As the company's fortune flourished, it became one of the world's leading Hanafuda manufacturers. Fast forward to 1956, when Fusajiro's grandson, Hiroshi Yamauchi, assumed leadership of Nintendo. Recognizing the need for diversification, Hiroshi embarked on a journey to explore new horizons for the company's growth. Hiroshi's innovative spirit led Nintendo down various paths, from instant rice packets to a taxicab company and even love hotels. Yet, he relentlessly searched for the breakthrough that would shape Nintendo's destiny. In the 1970s, the astounding success of home computer and arcade company Atari captured Hiroshi's attention. In 1977, Nintendo unveiled the color TV game home video game console, captivating the Japanese market. Preloaded with various versions of their own take on the popular game Pong, the console sold an impressive 3 million units in just three years. Yet, Hiroshi's ambitions knew no bounds. He set his sights on the flourishing realm of quarter-munching video arcade games. Fueled by the triumph of their arcade games in Japan, Nintendo embarked on a venture to conquer the American market. They produced 3,000 radar scope cabinets for distribution across the United States. Unfortunately, the American arcade vendors found Radar Scope too reminiscent of an already popular game called Space Invaders, and the incessant beeps and noises during gameplay proved off-putting. Nintendo faced an overwhelming setback, with nearly 2,000 unsold cabinets left in a Seattle-area warehouse. It seemed like their North American dreams were about to fade away. Nintendo stood at a crossroads, uncertain of their next move. But Destiny had a different plan in store. A small, mustachioed plumber named Mario was about to make his debut, and his arrival would change the course of Nintendo's history forever. In the face of adversity, Nintendo desperately sought redemption. At the helm of this high-stakes mission was Hiroshi's son-in-law, Minoru Arakawa, who at the time was the head of Nintendo America. With their financial future hanging in the balance, Arakawa implored Hiroshi Yamauchi for a game that could salvage the unused radar scope cabinets and potentially save the company from the imminent disaster. Yamauchi, aware of the gravity of the situation, turned to every Nintendo employee for ideas that could be transformed into a captivating video game. It was in this crucible that a remarkable art designer named Shigeru Miyamoto stepped forward with an audacious concept that would forever change the gaming landscape. Unlike his contemporaries, Miyamoto approached game creation by prioritizing storytelling over hardware capabilities. Inspired by the vibrant tapestry of American pop culture, Miyamoto keenly observed the immense popularity of Popeye the Sailor and recognized the potential for a game that revolved around its iconic characters. Delving into his imagination, he conceived a thrilling adventure set within a love triangle involving Popeye, Bluto, and olive oil. This premise, 
already familiar to audiences through television shows, held the promise of resonating deeply with players, drawing them into a world brimming with emotion and excitement. It was this distinctive approach that not only defined his genius, but also opened a new door in the realm of game development, ushering in an era where heartfelt storytelling took center stage. Unfortunately, the elusive rights to Popeye remained firmly out of reach, casting a shadow of disappointment over Miyamoto's ambitious vision. Undeterred, Miyamoto made a bold decision. He would create his own characters that fit the game's framework. Thus, instead of the classic love triangle, Miyamoto's game featured a brave carpenter named Jumpman on a heroic mission to rescue his beloved girlfriend, Pauline, from the clutches of the fearsome gorilla kidnapper, Donkey Kong. Nintendo released this game in 1981, which was aptly named Donkey Kong. Jumpman, with his striking red overalls and endearing red cap, quickly became an icon. His visual presentation was meticulously crafted to elicit a profound sense of relatability, a genuine embodiment of the everyman hero. Here's a fun fact. The designers initially attempted to give him a mouth, only to realize that their limited pixel capacity could only accommodate a stylish mustache. Donkey Kong roared onto the gaming scene with resounding success. Within a mere two years, an astonishing 60,000 copies flew off the shelves. Eager to capitalize on this triumph, Nintendo wasted no time in unleashing a sequel, Donkey Kong Jr., in 1982. This remarkable game introduced players to Donkey Kong's valiant son, embarking on a daring mission to rescue his captive father from the clutches of the character formerly known as Jumpman, now reborn as the iconic Mario. In an unprecedented twist, Mario assumed the role of the bad guy for the first and only time in his illustrious career. But the enigma behind Mario's name reaches even deeper, stemming from our previous encounter with the Seattle warehouse. As the development of Donkey Kong absorbed Nintendo's resources, the company inadvertently fell behind on their warehouse rent. In a charged moment of frustration, Mario Segal, the warehouse landlord, stormed into the premises, demanding immediate payment and wielding the threat of legal action. In a surprising turn of events, Arakawa reassured him that the rent would be promptly settled. Amidst the tension and jest, inspiration struck like a lightning bolt. Arakawa and his team playfully dubbed their pixelated creation Mario, a light-hearted homage to the unyielding presence of the warehouse landlord. Little did they realize that this seemingly inconsequential act of naming would etch itself into the annals of gaming history. What began as a playful taunt transformed into a symbol of courage, resilience, and boundless potential. In 1983, Nintendo unveiled another landmark sequel, Mario Brothers. This time, the game moved to the sewers of New York, with Mario embracing a new occupation as a skilled plumber, swapping his imaginary hammer for a symbolic wrench. And to complete this dynamic duo, a brother emerged from the shadows, Luigi. With the birth of the Mario Brothers, a legendary partnership was solidified, forever changing the course of gaming history. As Mario was taking shape in Japan, the video game industry faced a catastrophic crisis known as the Video Game Crash of 1983. In the 1980s, video games were starting to develop a negative reputation. Atari's game system dominated the market, but its lack of quality control and approval processes allowed anyone to release games for it. Consequently, there was an influx of disappointing and nearly unplayable games that frustrated consumers, leading to returns and backlash. Additionally, the rise of home computers as a gaming alternative further intensified the industry's decline, eroding consumer trust along the way. The critical turning point came in 1983 with the release of the infamous Atari game, E.T. Rushed to meet the Christmas deadline, E.T. turned out to be a massive disappointment, resulting in numerous returns and damaging word of mouth. Till now, many still believe it is the worst game ever. Atari, once the dominant force in the market, suffered a dramatic downfall, with its value plummeting from $3.2 billion in 1982 to a mere $100 million by 1985. The entire industry lost favor with manufacturers and companies distanced themselves from video games. A savior was desperately needed, 
And that's when Mario emerged as the hero. Amidst the industry's downturn, Nintendo was introducing its revolutionary maroon and white home console called the Family Computer or Famicom, back at home in Japan. This daring step marked Nintendo's ambitious leap from arcades to living rooms. The Famicom experienced soaring sales domestically, prompting Nintendo to redesign it for the American market, rebranding it as the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. However, with the recent crash still fresh in people's minds, Nintendo faced an uphill battle to regain consumer confidence and reinvigorate the industry. With great anticipation, the NES made its grand debut, accompanied by a remarkable lineup of 17 games. Among them, a familiar face emerged in an updated and exhilarating form. The iconic Plumber Brothers returned in Super Mario Brothers, ready to captivate gamers with their extraordinary adventures once again. In the enchanting world of Super Mario Brothers, players embarked on a thrilling journey alongside the heroic plumber Mario, as he set out to rescue Princess Peach from a colossal evil turtle, Bowser. Unlike the monotonous black backgrounds prevalent in most games of the time, this vibrant adventure unfolded under a clear blue sky, immersing players in a visually captivating landscape. Mario's quest was not without its share of whimsical elements. Magical mushrooms awaited him, transforming him into the mighty Super Mario, granting him the power to overcome obstacles and venture through verdant pipes that led to new and mysterious worlds. As players delved deeper into the game, they encountered mushroom traders, turtle soldiers, and carnivorous flora, all nestled within a labyrinth of hidden tricks and exhilarating levels. Super Mario Bros. offered an unprecedented experience, captivating gamers with its imaginative gameplay and pushing the boundaries of what was thought possible. Super Mario Bros. emerged as a monumental triumph, captivating the hearts and minds of both children and their parents, who willingly surrendered countless hours to explore the enchanting realm meticulously crafted by the visionary Shigeru Miyamoto. With an astonishing 40 million copies sold, the impact of this game was seismic, propelling the Mario franchise into an unstoppable trajectory. Nintendo adeptly seized this opportunity, deftly integrating Mario into over 200 sequels and spin-offs, ensuring his magnetic presence remained an enduring treasure within the gaming pantheon. By the dawn of the 1990s, the name Mario resonated more deeply with American children than the iconic Mickey Mouse. Today, Super Mario stands tall as the world's best-selling video game character, boasting a staggering estimated 650 million copies sold as of March 2023. How about the video game industry that was on the brink of demise in the aftermath of the devastating crash of 1983? Thanks to the remarkable contributions of Mario and Nintendo, the industry experienced a remarkable revival. By 1986, signs of progress began to emerge, signaling a turning tide. The year 1988 proved to be a pivotal moment, as annual sales surpassed a staggering $2.3 billion, with Nintendo commanding an impressive 70% share of the market. Today, Super Mario has transcended the confines of our consoles, immersing us in his adventures that unfold not just in virtual worlds, but also in the real world. From the enchanting Super Nintendo World theme area at Universal Studios to the unforgettable sight of the Japanese Prime Minister donning the iconic plumber's attire to promote the Tokyo Olympics, and now witnessing Mario's adventures being taken to the big screen, Super Mario has become a cultural phenomenon that stretches far beyond the realm of gaming. As we reflect upon the legacy of Super Mario and the profound impact he has had on our lives, let us be reminded that greatness can emerge from the most unexpected beginnings. It all started with a small, pixelated character created as part of an alternative plan, and now it has blossomed into a global sensation that sparks joy in the hearts of millions. Thank you for joining us on this thrilling adventure through the world of Super Mario and Nintendo. Stay tuned for more of our videos. Until then, may your own adventures be filled with endless possibilities. See you in the next video.